I'm sure we all at some point fantasy booked what they would do with CM Punk. Do you save it for the main event? Do you do a tease where the music plays and somebody else comes out? The one thing that I never thought of, the simplest answer is the show opens, Cult of Personality plays, and CM Punk comes out. You got a much bigger audience at the beginning of the show, theoretically, than at the end. And the other thing is he can talk for as long as he wants before you have to go to those matches. Awesome. It's easier to cut time for a wrestling match than to tell CM Punk that he's got to wrap it up. He, he's emotional. The fans are even mo- more emotional. Grown men were weeping to watch a guy walk out. And he does some crowd surfing. And the guy who was crowd surfed into got some great photos of that. They're all over Twitter. And he's about to leave. He says, everyone gets an ice cream bar on me. Yeah, heard they were and good ice cream bars. I heard uh, uh, a lot of things about these ice cream bars. A local ice cream company made them. Somebody did the math and figured this th- this free ice cream promotion cost CM Punk about $75,000. And until I actually saw him with my own eyes, that's when goosebumps on top of goosebumps. And I was filled with joy and happiness. They wanted pictures with him. They were in awe. They were like, oh my God, he like he hung out and he would just he was just hanging out with everybody. And I'm like, he's your colleague now. That's his job is to hang out at the show and then go out there and be a part of the show. You're all you're all co-workers now. It was a big freaking deal. And anybody who says otherwise is absolutely a moron. <laughs> wow you're not wrong you're not wrong we also watched wwe SummerSlam 2001 august 21st 2001 20 did i watch the wrong show Jesus i hope Christ. not becky lynch was at SummerSlam. bianca in hindsight this is silly but she was marking out <laughs> she went crazier for becky than craig went for cm punk we false advertise we do an unannounced return then the unannounced return who isn't ready to do a long match squashes your champion and wins the title so now bianca belair has been wronged which is actually the whole reason that becky is the man right now because she got wronged at a SummerSlam several years ago now becky is the one doing the wronging i was like fuck me i could think of a thousand things you could have done better than this hey. dude there's a nikki bella interview it's like it's about 30 seconds you can find it on the internet but the question is what was your favorite favorite part of SummerSlam and she fucking launches into a tirade about this and ends with there truly wasn't anything that was my favorite I was wow. like holy <laughs> fuck wow that's excellent Bianca Belair is now Bob Backlund to Becky Lynch's Diesel she is mm. Kofi Kingston to Becky's Brock Lesnar take your pick she's the honky tonk man to Becky Lynch's ultimate warrior none of these are good things it does appear they have decided to turn Becky Lynch heel really hmm. huh Interesting. And then, of course, Brock Lesnar and his beard and ponytail made their big return at the end of the match. You know that ponytail's going to... That's going to take some getting used to. I ain't going to Nah, lie. come on. It's one of the greatest matches I ever saw in my life. I love this match with every shred of my being. A fucking masterpiece this was. If I were Adam Cole and I was, like, on the fence, oh. and it was, like, 50-50 where I went... And they told me you got to follow Volter and Dragunov. <laughs> I'm out of here, dude. I'm going to AEW. God damn it. But Karrion Cross comes out. There is no Scarlet. The crowd's changed. What, what happened to my Scarlet? That's what the crowd said. Did she get sent back down to the tilted kilt in Chicago? <laughs> I don't have an answer to that one. Still at the beach. Living that life. Hanging out with llamas. Ah, oh, it's a great time. In the 1930s, I used to watch uh, uh, How to Train Your Dragon on the iPad. And I'll say, is that so, Paisley? They didn't have iPads in the 1930s. And she's like, what? I say, yeah, they didn't have iPads in the 1930s. Any funny stories from being drunk? I never got that bad that I... Any... Hmm. Are you drunk right now? (laughs) Yeah, are you drinking right now? What's going on? Back hand drop. Choke hold on shoulders over shoulders drop. Power bomb. <laughs> what is going on in this match? Hard butt leg lash. <laughs> Hard and butt leg lash? I kind of like Corbin because he. <laughs> oh, now you like Corbin all of a sudden? Oh my God. He's down on his luck. You know what he did, Granny? He went to Vegas and won a bunch of money. So tune into SmackDown on Friday to see Happy Corbin. Reigns versus Cena. Five knuckle super punches by Reigns. And uh, uh, it was a, I just hated that match. And, you know, if I was Cena, I would have been so mad for making him go through such an embarrassment 
It was a disappointment. <laughs> oh boy. Walter versus Dragunov. Is it? I'm going to just call him D. First move, slap on D. Face block. Hard face knock. Choke hold. Uh, looks like D is crying. Uh, <laughs> D just has bruises. Think about this. This is in 2001, not 2021. He says Vince is nuts. He's lost his touch. He has been producing nothing but horrible television. He says the WWF sucks, and the fans start to boo, and he says, Why are you booing? Have you watched this show? You could see from the quarters that, you know, people tuned in at the beginning in large numbers. They tuned in to see CM Punk, and after that, they, they lost audiences as the show went on. That, to me, does speak to show quality. It was not a show that kept people through to the main event. There were some extenuating circumstances. There were some people that were not available. Shit happens in wrestling. It's not the end of the world. It wasn't the world's greatest show. I don't know why people get so mad about that. Like, there's a high standard because the shows normally are good. But uh, I think everything will be all right. <laughs> I should do play-by-play -play of Brian's sneezing fit. I thought you could have a lot of people tuning in. Maybe it's for the first time. Maybe they're coming back. Maybe they've been listening to a Cornette podcast or whatever. They've heard all these horrible things about AEW, but now they want to see it for the first time. And the very first thing they see is the slow motion kicks. I wouldn't have done that. One final fight at All Out. And if he can't beat MJF, he will never wrestle in AEW again. He comes out on stage in his MJF3 Jared Blow Zero t-shirt, which is in fact available for sale at uh, AEW shop. They specifically wanted the Lucha Brothers versus Penton Phoenix match on Friday. And so it couldn't be on this show. Or Lucha trying Brothers to do versus Jurassic Express. Jurassic Express. What did I say? Lucha Brothers versus Penta and Phoenix, which also sounds great. I have seen Penta versus Phoenix and teaming with Phoenix. So I think if you could do Penta and Phoenix versus Lucha Bros, there's no way you could go wrong. They're serving mini masters all out. Uh, the big stadium Arthur. show at Arthur Ashe. Uh, there's other special shows coming up. They do have a lot of what's the word? A lot of a lot of. Many masters to serve, Vinny. Masters to serve. This is, this is like pots in the fire or whatever it is. But yes, there's a lot going on. And uh, as Many you know, irons in the fire. Irons in the fire. Thank you. Jamie Hayter and Red Velvet. Wow. Yeah. The, the, the TLDR version is they had a very, very sloppy match. I'm happy nobody died and move on. If Bray Wyatt is coming in, mm -hmm. everyone's thinking he's going to be the new leader of the Dark Order. Sure. Now, I will say that as of a couple of days ago... I stand by Bray Wyatt is not coming to AEW, okay? Mm -hmm. If you want to know where I think he's going, I think he's going to Impact, but I don't know. And the crowd starts to chant, yes, yes, yes. And, of course, he has to tell them that somebody else should stick, and you'll have to be patient for a while, he says. And the crowd takes this as a massive teaser, and they go crazy. It was not delivering the way I expected it to deliver. And then the next thing I know, I'm looking at the wingmen. And as much as I love J.D. Drake, it's like, now he's wearing suspenders. He looks yes, like Big Bubba Rogers. More I'm like, oh, my God. Kill these dudes and let's get, like, a, a, a big-time match coming up here. And I never got it. If you told me that, in your opinion, that was the worst Dynamite of the year, I wouldn't argue with you. It is not the worst problem as a promoter to book such high quality shows on a regular yes. basis <laughs> that if you have one below those standards people are complaining about it like right, there are yeah. far worse problems to have i'm watching this on the roh website and there's still commercial breaks but all the commercials are the whatever the the, the car company is that a uh, rick flair is their their spokesman i've seen some of these commercials before i've not seen the one i've seen the one with ellie knight i had seen the one with peter avalon i had not seen the one where somebody steals his yogurt and he attacks him with a chair <laughs> Don't steal the Nature Boys yogurt if you want. Bad idea. It is such an easy show to watch. Yes. Especially if you like car commercials. <laughs> Ric Flair. It's, it's very easy. There's three matches. Boom, boom, boom. It's yeah. one hour. ROHWrestling.com. You hit watch, and you could watch the show That's for exactly free. What I did. 